Today I'm making yogurt, but I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to use a powder starter that I bought online. Usually I make yogurt using cultures from the leftover yogurt of a previous batch, or I use supermarket yogurt as a starter. But today I'm trying out this powdered starter. I bought a 12 pack of three gram packets of starter, and each packet will culture one liter or one quart of milk. You don't have to use a packet every time you make the yogurt, just like when you use supermarket yogurt, you can make a batch of yogurt from that, and then you can use some of that yogurt to make your next batch for up to five times. Some people say even 10 times. This doesn't last indefinitely in my experience. After a couple of homemade batches, you'll notice that the yogurt is coming out a little more runny or taking longer to set and that is usually an indication that the cultures have weakened. Okay, the starter that I'm using today has the seven strains you see listed here, which is more than most supermarket brands have, and that is part of the reason that I bought this starter, for the probiotics that you don't find in most supermarket brands. For example, Dan & Yogurt has listed three strains of live cultures. On the other hand, Stonyfield does sell a probiotic yogurt, which contains six strains of probiotics, one strain less than this powdered starter, although they're not exactly the same strains, and this starter has an extra culture called Lactobacillus helveticus. Apparently, it's helpful for the immune system and has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. And of course, it's much more economical to use this powdered powdered starter than buying yogurt from the supermarket. So it's a double win. A win on the probiotics and a win on the economics. All right, let's start by boiling our milk. I have here a quart of milk that I'm heating up and while I'm doing that I'm making sure my yogurt cups are clean and somewhat sanitized by pouring boiling water over and in all of them. Obviously, my kitchen isn't a sterile environment like a hospital operating room, and neither is my sink, but it is clean, and pouring boiling water on the glass yogurt cups will hopefully kill any unfriendly bacteria that might compete with the friendly strains that I want to cultivate in the yogurt. The instructions say to heat the milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 82 degrees Celsius, or bring the milk to a boil. I don't use a thermometer, I just watch to see when the milk starts to form little bubbles. I've seen discussion on the internet about whether it's important to boil the milk and why, and I've tried not boiling the milk to make the yogurt, and I found that the end product is much creamier and thicker when I do boil the milk than if I don't. Yes, it will come out if you don't boil the milk, but it may be a little runny, and it will come out much better if you take that extra step to heat up the milk. Heating up the milk denatures the whey proteins and that helps to thicken up the final product. Sort of like when you knead dough, the gluten becomes stronger and more elastic. Well, boiling the milk does something to the whey proteins that gives the yogurt a better consistency. There is a secondary reason for boiling the milk, and that's to kill any additional bad bacteria that might be hanging around, especially if the bottle of milk is not fresh and was already opened and used. Then some other bacteria may have been introduced into it. So I always boil my milk to be safe, or at least get it up to the boiling point, and my yogurt comes out delicious, thick, and creamy. And here you can see the bubbles starting to form. At around 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 71 degrees Celsius, the milk will start to form a skin on the top. This is because the water evaporates from the surface, and when it does, it concentrates the proteins and fats in the milk, and this causes a skin to form on the surface. I've heard that some people stir this back into the milk, but I don't. I skim it off. Okay, so now that my milk has reached at least 180 degrees, and I know this because of the bubbling that's going on, this is just about to reach a full boil, and that's when I turn off the heat. You can let it boil, but sometimes it boils over and you'll get a mess, so I like to catch it just before it boils. 
Next, I let the pot of milk sit for a while until it cools down, and then I skim off the skin. As you can see, it comes off quite easily in one big blob. Before you mix the milk with the yogurt cultures, make sure that it's cooled down to at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 43 degrees Celsius. And again, I don't use a thermometer, even though I have one. I use the old tried and true method of sticking my very clean pinky into the milk, and if I don't burn myself, it's good. Seriously, it should be warm to the touch still, but not so hot that you can't stick your pinky in. And make sure it's a clean pinky. According to the directions on the package, you can pour the starter powder directly into the pot. I poured it back into a separate bowl, not the pot that I heated it in, because sometimes, actually most of the time, there are milk particles that are stuck to the bottom and sides of the pot, and I don't want that to get mixed in and give the milk a grainy texture. I just want to mix in the liquidy milk, nothing else that might be clinging to the sides and bottom of the pot. And I use a whisk and mix it all together. You can use a fork or maybe even chopsticks, but I use a whisk. Now the mixture is ready for incubation and you can pour all of this into a container and incubate it in a warm environment. Some people put the cultured milk into an oven with the light on to incubate overnight. I'm lucky enough to have a yogurt machine that incubates the milk at just the right temperature. This is actually a very old machine and I'm sure they make fancier models nowadays. This has just an on off switch, no timer and no variable temperature. I like this style of yogurt maker because it portions out the yogurts into cups. Otherwise I'd probably eat more than a fair portion since it's so delicious. I could eat the whole batch in one sitting probably. So this way it's portioned out and it lasts me for a whole week. I'm gonna try a little experiment here. I'm leaving four of the cups with the caps off and four of the cups with the caps on and I'm curious to see if it makes a difference. I usually incubate with the caps on, but I'm curious, does it matter? Here you can see the condensation forming on the lid of the yogurt maker after a couple of hours. When I put the caps on, I usually don't see this. The condensation stays under the cap, I suppose. Okay, it's nine hours later and let's have a look. And you can see the yogurt looks pretty nice and solid at this point. And let's have a look at one of these cups where I left the cap on. And it looks similar, maybe a little wetter on top but also quite solid, maybe a tad more jiggly than the uncovered cups. Those look quite solid. I decided to let this batch incubate for one extra hour, so now it's 10 hours later, and they're going to go into the refrigerator to chill up and set overnight. I decided to mark the cups that were capped with a little blue tape, and the cups I left uncapped, I just put the caps on them without any marking. I want to see if there's a difference between the two once they've set in the refrigerator. And here it is the next morning and I have my two yogurts, one that incubated with the cap on, that's this one with the blue tape, and one that incubated with the cap off, and let's see if it mattered. Okay, visually they look the same, nice and solid, and now for the taste test, mmm, very creamy. Now for the other one, hmm, tastes the same. Both are very creamy, very smooth, and very thick, almost like Greek yogurt. I have eight cups of this. I'm going to eat seven and a half of the cups and then leave half a cup as a starter for my next batch. That was the first time I ever used a powdered starter rather than yogurt to culture the milk, and it came out great. It was easy and these packets can keep for two years if you ever find you need to reculture your yogurt. It's good to have a stash of these on hand. It has some extra strains of bacteria that supermarket yogurts don't necessarily have. Win-win. I like that. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.